Welcome to Kini News. I'm your host, Camelia. Najib Abdurazak has criticized former Premier Dr. Mahathir Mohamad for not cooperating with the government on the Pulau Batu Puteh issue. Pekan MP Najib Abdul Razak has criticised former Premier Dr Mahathir Mohamad over his refusal to cooperate with the government on the Pulau Batu Puteh inquiry. In a statement today, Najib compared Mahathir to former Attorney General Tommy Thomas. He said Tommy had also refused to cooperate with a special task force in January that was set up to investigate the claims made in his book, My Story, Justice in the Wilderness. He said Atok's behaviour is like Tommy's and he had no intention to cooperate with the government of the day. Najib also described Mahathir and Tommy's actions as being disrespectful to RCIs. He added that Mahathir, as a person who once held the reins of power, should have the courage to take responsibility and be accountable to the nation and its people. Yesterday, Mahathir walked out of the Attorney General's chambers where he was supposed to be interviewed by a panel over the Pulau Batu Puteh issue. He claimed the walkout was due to Apandi, being the panel's chairperson and a person with a conflict of interest in the case. A PKR youth leader has chastised Hamza Zainuddin over his remarks on immigration deaths and called on Prime Minister Ismail Sabri Yaakob to sack him as the Home Minister. Johor PKR Youth Legal Bureau Chief Lau Yi Leong has called on the Prime Minister to sack Home Minister Hamza Zainuddin. This was over Hamza's remarks regarding the deaths of migrants in Sabah immigration detention centres. Lau said that the government has shown no intention to investigate the rising cases of deaths in immigration custody. He added that they should form a royal commission of inquiry and investigate conditions of the immigration detention centres, claims of widespread corrupt practice within the immigration department, and the rising number of deaths. He said if the government still maintains any belief in human rights, Ismail Sabri should immediately remove Hamza as Home Minister. Yesterday, Hamza had said that if he could predict deaths in detention to prevent them, that would make him great. However, he argued that anyone can die anywhere. He added that if they were detained, it meant that they have committed a crime. And when someone has committed a crime, we are forced to follow the existing laws. Hamza was responding to a question about a report released by the Sovereign Migrant Workers Coalition on June 25th which said the Malaysian embassy in Jakarta recorded 149 Indonesians who died in five Sabah detention centres over 18 months between 2021 and 2022. The report also revealed appalling conditions in these detention centres and toddlers being held there. Hamza's remarks has also drawn brickbats from DAP's Bukit Galugor MP Ram Karpal Singh. DAP lawmaker Ram Karpal Singh has accused Home Minister Hamza Zainuddin of ignoring the main issue on detention centres. He said this following Hamza's response to a recent report of detainees dying in Sabah immigration centres. Ram Karpal questioned if Hamza realised that the report was not about predicting deaths in detention centres but about the appalling condition at the centres. He highlighted how the report observed Amongst others, that, owing to the poor conditions in the immigration detention center, detainees had quickly turned into patients. He also pointed out that the report is not the first time complaints and calls for reform have been made about the state of detention centers. Ram Karpal said Hamza, as the Home Minister, should understand that detainees have human rights, with the most important one being the right to life. On June 25th, the Sovereign Migrant Workers Coalition had reported that the Malaysian Embassy in Jakarta recorded 149 Indonesians who died in five Sabah detention centres over 18 months between 2021 and 2022. The report titled, A Report from Hell, Conditions of the Immigration Detention Centres in Sabah, also revealed appalling conditions in the centres and toddlers being held there. When asked to respond to the report yesterday, Hamza had said that it would be great if he could predict deaths in detention to prevent them. Still on Hamza, the Bersatu Secretary General said he has not received any letter from Muhammadin Katapi about leaving the party. 
Bursati Secretary General Hamza Zainuddin said he has not received any letter from Lahat Datu MP Mohammadin Katapi on his announcement to quit the party. In a press conference yesterday, Hamza said that Mohammadin had only sent him a message in the morning asking to discuss the matter and added that he will talk to Mohammadin. Mohammadin had announced yesterday that he had quit Bersatu less than a year after joining the party. He was reported to have said that he decided to quit because he was not given the role and trust to strengthen the party in his constituencies. Mohammadin is both the Lahat Datu MP and Sagama Assembly person. On October 30th last year, he had announced that he was leaving Warisan before joining Basatu the following month. Sabah-born Australian minister Penny Wong recalled her family history in her maiden visit as a minister to Malaysia today. Australian Foreign Minister Penny Wong, who was born in Kota Kinabalu, Sabah, arrived in Malaysia for a three-day official visit yesterday. During her first public engagement in the country, Wong reflected on her Malaysian roots and recounted her personal ties with the country. Wong said she was of Hakka descent and her family were in Sandakan when war came to the country. According to Wong, most of her family died in the war and her grandmother was left alone to care for her children. She added that her grandmother's determination to survive and save herself and her children is something that she drew strength from every day. Wong also spoke of education as being a core foundation for Australia and Malaysia. She shared that her father was able to get a scholarship to study architecture in Australia. Wong said this allowed him to climb out of the poverty he experienced as a child, have access to better opportunities and to eventually move back to Kota Kinabalu with his family. She said she is glad that he is not the only Malaysian to gain from an education in Australia, as over the past 20 years, more than 125,000 Malaysians have studied in Australia. According to Wong, many Australians are also benefiting from education in Malaysia, which is one of the most popular destinations for Australian undergraduate students supported by the new Colombo plan. She added that Australia wants to strengthen these ties further, including working together on challenges both countries face, such as food security and the health and pandemic recovery, among others. The Kebun Kebun Bangsar Community Garden earned Prime Minister Ismail Sabri Yaakob's admiration a couple of weeks ago. However, now the community garden has been told to vacate the land it occupies. Kebun Kebun Bangsar, a community garden in Kuala Lumpur, has been given an eviction notice and told to vacate the land it occupies immediately. This came just weeks after the project was praised by Prime Minister Ismail Sabri Yaakob. Kebun Kebun Bangsa posts a picture of the eviction notice from the Kuala Lumpur Land Administrator, dated June 23rd on Facebook yesterday. The notice ordered them to vacate the land immediately and warned that enforcement action could be taken at any time to evict them. They said failure to comply with the order can bring a fine of up to 500,000 ringgit or a jail term of up to five years. In their post, Kebun Kebun Bangsa also shared screenshots of Isma Sabri's praises for the project and a similar one in Karinchi. In his post on Twitter on June 5th, Ismail Sabri had said he was drawn to the community projects and hoped the government's commitment towards its green agenda can be sown amongst all layers of society for the sake of Kaluaga Malaysia's future. The garden is located beneath TMB high-tension cables in Bukit Pantai, where flowers, vegetables and mushrooms are grown. Some animals such as peacocks, goats, ducks and chickens are also kept. According to Federal Territories Land and Mines Director Mohammad Yasir Yahya, his office is taking action against Kebun Kebun Bangsa for allegedly violating its temporary occupancy license conditions for operating as a nursery. In a statement, he said this meant only certain plants could be cultivated and no permanent structures could be erected. Mohammad said his office also received verbal and written complaints regarding disturbance from the garden. And that is all from me today. For more stories, you can go to kinitv.com. You can also follow us on Instagram, Twitter, YouTube and Facebook for the latest news updates. If you'd like to support independent media, do consider subscribing to malaysiakini.com. I'm Camilia. Thanks for watching.